Hello, and thank you so much for joining me for Next Weather. I'm meteorologist Hannah Fink, and it is the 20th anniversary of Hurricane Katrina making landfall this Friday. So we're going to go through some of the advisories and the tracks that led up to landfall. So we're going to talk about advisories 10 through 17. That is August 25th, 20, 20, 2005 to August 27th to 2005. So we're going to break those down here, give you a little bit of a rundown on what each one of those advisories meant and also show some after pictures of landfall from Hurricane Katrina. So let's just jump right into it. This is the forecast path for August 25th, 2005, 10 p.m. advisory for Hurricane Katrina. This is the track that was made, the hurricane, the cone presented. This is when it was going through South Florida as a category one and becoming a tropical storm that Friday evening. So currently it was located off the Florida coast across, and then about to cross into South Florida. It was a category one storm, 75 mile per hour winds, only at a pressure of 985 millibars. Now for its forecast track, models showed wide, uh, a widespread anywhere from Texas to the Florida panhandle for where it could really go. We really weren't 100% sure on the turn or its steering. Steering controlled by ridges to the north, so it was really uncertain at this point what it was going to do. And in 2005, one thing you do notice compared to cones we see now, this was a very large cone. It was very wide at the time. So the biggest takeaway from this was it was her Katrina was still relatively weak at this point. Forecasters warned of rapid strengthening over the hot Gulf waters. We know at this time, this is late August, so we know that the Gulf waters were very warm at this point. We are getting close to the peak of hurricane season. We are about a month out from it at this point. So this was advisory 10. The next one we are going to look at is the uh, August 26th of 2005, the 10 a.m. advisory for Hurricane Katrina. So this was advisory 12. Uh, location, it was in the Gulf of Mexico at this point, west of Florida. As you can see, it is now uh, a Category 2 storm with 80 mile per hour winds. It was, there was confidence increasing in the northern Gulf, uh, there being landfall somewhere in the northern gulf this was ranging from louisiana to the florida panhandle so at this point forecast forecasters were seeing the intensification being possible you can see they were seeing a possibility of a category three but forecasts raised to a, between a category three and four strength by landfall. So the biggest thing they noticed was it was strengthening steadily. The storm started to become more, a more serious Gulf threat at this time. Then we had the 4 p.m. update. So it shifted a little bit. It's still off the coast, the west side of the Florida Panhandle, still Really, you can see that intensification with it. Category four storm is now predicted at this point. So one thing I do want to point out is at 11.30, 10.30 our time, this is when we saw this mor that morning at 11.30 Eastern time, the hurricane hunters went in and saw that the storm was rapidly intensifying. We saw rapid strengthening, Pressure had dropped to 971 millibars. Uh, they expected rapid intensification in the next 12 hours because of this data coming from the hurricanes, uh, the hurricane hunters. So forecast raised to near category four of 135 mile per hour winds within that 72 hour period. That's where you see it on Monday at 1 p.m. where it can make landfall near Louisiana in Southern Mississippi as well. So this was the first strong signal from the National Hurricane Center that Katrina was about to explode in strength. Now let's get to the actual advisory for this time showing this cone. That is one thing I wanted to point out is they had a special advisory come out. So we have to advisors come out 10 a.m. our time, 11 a.m. Eastern time. That is where the National Hurricane Center is located in Miami. They had a special advisory come out 30 minutes after their scheduled advisories coming out because the National Hurricane Centers went in to Katrina at that time and realized that it has strengthened more than they thought it was going to in a small amount of time. 
So now this is for 4 p.m. advisory for Hurricane Katrina, still on the 26th. It is in the central Gulf of Mexico. It is now a Category 2 storm nearing Category 3 levels. Models clustered that the track would be in the Louisiana-Mississippi coastline. That is where it's going to make landfall and turn northward. And this was expected in the next 48 to 60 hours. It's still expected to become a Category 4 storm, and Katrina is clearly becoming a major hurricane, and forecast confidence started tightening more on where it was going to go, and especially in the strength. So this is when it started to become more of a concern. The next advisory I'm going to show is that night. Now we're still seeing it become a Category 4 storm a lot earlier. So let's go back to show you that 4 p.m. advisory on that day. You can see they didn't think it was going to become a Category 4 storm until Monday when it made landfall. Now we go to the advisory that came out six hours later on that same day. Same day. Look at that. They thought it was going to be on Monday where it was going to become a Category 4 storm. Now they're predicting it to become a Category 4 storm the next day, the next night. So we go from a Category 2 storm on August 26th. Now we are seeing a Category 3 that next morning and then a Category 4 that next evening. So you can just see that the rapid intensification of the storm was something that was happening obviously very rapidly. Rapid intensification happens when a storm increases in strength, 35 mile per hour winds or higher in a very short amount of time. Well, this was an extremely short amount of time. Right when it hit those Gulf waters, Katrina really started to strengthen its speed. So it is predicted to be a category four storm by Saturday night and continue to be a category four storm until Monday when it was predicted to make landfall. So the next advisory that comes out is the next day. August 27th at 10 a.m. This is what was predicted. Now it is a category three storm. Now it is classified as a major hurricane with 115 mile per hour winds. Pressure has dropped 21 millibars. Around 950 millibars was the pressure at this time. The National Hurricane Center is now predicting its track to make landfall in southeastern Louisiana in the next 48 to 60 hours. Consensus is now growing. Range now from Grand Isle, Louisiana to Pensacola, Florida. You can see that in the track there. And the intensity forecast, now it is expected to reach Category 4 storm level of 130 mile per hour winds over the central gulf. At this point, Katrina is now a major hurricane and the danger is mainly to Louisiana and Mississippi, and that has become more clear at this point. As you saw at the beginning, I'll show you the cone again when we had August 25th. We really weren't sure on where the storm was going to go. You can see we have all the way to Jacksonville, Mississippi in that cone to southern Mississippi. Mobile's in it as well. Now look at how it shifts. This is how the confidence grew in a two day period. So we didn't have a lot of confidence on where it was going to go and what it was going to do. At that point, it just entered the Gulf. And sometimes when things enter the Gulf, it doesn't always take the turn that it's supposed to take, especially with atmospheric conditions like ridging or low pressure systems or fronts. Those things all contribute to the track of a hurricane. So another thing I wanted to point out was now that we are on August 27th, it is now this is where things start to get serious. National Weather Service is now also issuing um, hurricane watches for Southeast Louisiana, including the area of New Orleans. And this is also the day later on in the day around this time, they said that Katrina reaching a category five strength storm was not out of the question. We were still seeing the possibility of intensification. Obviously, the confidence wasn't 100% there because it is not in the cone, but it does become more serious later on that we are seeing the chance for a Category 5 storm later on in that day. We just don't have that advisory in our graphic system right now, but it is forecasted to possibly become a Category 5 storm. So to give you all the big picture progression from August 25th to August 27th, the first advisory for August 25th which was advisory 10. It was a weak category one storm. The track was still pretty uncertain and there was a possibility that it was forecast to become a category two or three hurricane. Then the next day, August 26th, that's when we got advisory 12 through 14, rapid strengthening started, forecast upgraded to a category 
force storm in strength and then the track narrowed to Louisiana and southern Mississippi. Then we got to August 27th. This is two days before official landfall, which was August 29th. Advisory 15 through 17 came out that Katrina is now a major hurricane at a Category 3 strength. It is forecasted to become a Category 4 or 5 storm, where a Category 5 storm was a lot more likely in this case. And the tracks locked into the area of Louisiana, and that's when hurricane watches were issued for areas such as New Orleans. Now, another thing I want to show you is just some of the pictures. This entire week, we will be talking about Katrina a lot more. These pictures I'm about to show you are from the USGS, Science for a Changing World. So here is a look at that. We're just going to break it down. Here is the Chandelier Islands. They are north. Um, this is some of their things associated with that. Here are some of those pictures to show you the catastrophic flooding that happened in that area. See here, there's a lot of water now in that picture. July 17th, compa 2001 compared to August 31st, 2005, right after Hurricane after Hurricane Katrina had made landfall. You can see the intense flooding. There's not a lot of green in that picture. Here's one that's a little closer to home. We have Dauphin Island. As you can see, the island has changed drastically in that short amount of time. You can see that houses were destroyed. The island was almost rearranged at that point. And then here is the mainland in Mississippi what it looked like. Here's the difference between that one house that was there that is now gone, another one in the background completely gone. All that was left was that lighthouse that's in the middle there and that pier is completely destroyed as well. Here's more pictures of the houses that just did not withstand this hurricane. So now this is another reminder. We are now approaching the 20th anniversary of Hurricane Katrina. That official anniversary will be this Friday, August 29th. Next weather, we're going to break it down just a little bit more what happened with Katrina, forecasting, the damage, etc. We'll continue to break that down since it did impact our area and it was such a huge storm. Category 5 storm, the name Katrina was retired if you were not aware of that already. Thank you so much for joining me and going over the forecast track of Hurricane Katrina before landfall. Have a great rest of your night.